cast your mind back to 1992. Where were you? What did it smell like? Perhaps you were sitting down to play the new Reiner Knizia game, Quo Vardis. The first and only game to ask the question, Quo Vardis? A game whose front looks like a kitchen countertop and back has all the charm of a sleep apnea machine instruction manual. Alternate editions include a man with a Doric pillar for a neck and a board that looks like the smell of antiseptic. Seriously, some of the pictures of this game on BGG make it look like it's actually died. Enter the doctors of Bitewing Games, who a mere 30 years later have brought this game back to life. That metaphor doesn't quite work. They're actually dentists. What do you mean? Uh, quo, quo. Quo, quo, quo do you mean? The, the people at Bitewing Games, they're not doctors. The company's founded by two dentists. Oh. Well, uh, in that case, they've ripped out all the old game's dusty teeth and squeezed in all the gold into the cavities. That doesn't work either. Because we're here to tell you the new release of Zoo Vardis, this board game, is... Great! Good! Oh, it's, wait, it's great. It's I great. think it's great. No, it's, it's, oh, it's really it's good, little, good game. little game. Look at this lion it's on the front. Good game. So good! Mm. So the original Quo Vardis was a game of negotiation and tactics about Romans trying to get elected to the Senate. Zoo Vardis at once honours this game's history while also respectfully placing it into the bin by reimagining that theme as animals trying to get elected as a zoo's star mascot. With phenomenal art from Quan Shai Moria that really brings this imaginary concept of a zoo to life. So within the fiction of this board game, a zoo is a place where animals have little houses and then humans can come and visit the zoo to look at whatever animals Quince, 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 Zoo, they like. Zoos are real. They, they exist. Um, they're a real thing. You know, animals, they, they put them in little cages for people to come and look at. There's one in London. You can, you can go and... You can go and... Well, don't. Like, <laughs> no, no, listen, you listen, said you're doing You're telling you me said, I could be looking at lizards yes, right now yeah, and we're no, reviewing board games in your house. You can do it afterwards. No. You're here now. You've got to do the video. Do they have the elephants? Video. Yes, they have elephants. Come back! Come back! Come. So, how do you get your animal elected and win the game? Well, this here is the star exhibit, and you only qualify for victory if you manage to get one of your animals in here after drifting up through the rest of the exhibits. When this exhibit fills up, that will trigger the end of the game, and the player who has the most laurels and an animal in this exhibit will be the winner. If you don't have an animal in that exhibit, then you automatically lose. Sorry, Marmosets. You're cute, but you're democratically ineligible. So, when we're done with the review, we can go to the... Yeah, you can go to the zoo. We can. Okay, so the rest of the game is beautifully straightforward. Basically, on your turn, all you do is you move an animal, probably. You step them forward and collect the laurels on the path you move them down. There's just one catch. You can only move your animal out of an exhibit and down the path if you have the votes of a majority of animals in that cage, which means either bribing the other players with laurels or promising them your loyalty somehow or offering them a use of your seductive animal power. Now, you might be wondering, can I move animals into a cage just to glom votes off the people stuck in there before they can leave? Yes! Can I welch on promises on a later turn? Absolutely! Can I create a voting block in a really important cage and then just extort votes from the people stuck in there with me like a tiny corrupt alligator oligarchy? My friend, Zuvardis was made for would-be autocrats just like you. Delightfully, that's almost all of Zuvardis' rules. There's a few other things you can do on your turn though. If you don't want to or can't move any of your animals, you can instead move a peacock who don't belong to any player and strut about the zoo freely, taking up space. I'll just point out here, players who've made it to the star exhibit are almost certainly going to start soliciting bribes to stop them from flooding the star exhibit with useless peacocks, as if they were clogging a toilet with feathers. There's just one final thing you can do on your turn, which is move the zookeeper, who basically holds Cage's doors open. He seems really bad at his job. Yeah, it's either like anarchism or like a really dedicated kind of negligence. <laughs> either way, I approve. So that's the basics of Zuvardis, and it's terrific. It's fun, it's funny, it's simple, it's unique. Zuvardis, then, is a rare breed, a negotiation game that Shut Up and Sit Down universally agrees on. Sidereal Confluence, I think it's sufficiently complex, busy, and weird that even suggesting playing it makes me physically anxious. That's because you're weak. On the other hand, Tom's favourite negotiation game, I'm the Boss, just feels like an obnoxiousness simulator. It's a game for people who just want to shout with their entire body 
at their friends. Yeah! That. And King's Dilemma has too much role playing for some people. TI4 is a negotiation game according to Board Game Geek, but it's more like a collective aneurysm, and nobody wants to play John Company with me ever again. Zoo Vardis then joins the ranks of such classic games as Bonanza and Chinatown in being not just a great negotiation game, but a crowd pleasing and accessible one with a teach that lasts just five minutes and a game that barely lasts more than 30 minutes, with players just looking at each other and doing bad deals the entire time. I think that that ease of play and the ease of the rules is so important here. Players need to be comfortable with the rules so that they can be comfortable with each other. And like the very best Knizia games, the simplicity of the rules allows your whole attention to be focused on the play of it all. Exactly. But credit where it's due to the curators at Bytewing, all of the changes they suggested to the original Reiner Knizia design are all first class. Like having a double-sided board and these cool neutral peacock pieces so the game now plays great from three players all the way up to a whopping seven and each animal having a special power that they can't use themselves but can sell. Like the ibises finding extra room for you in an exhibit or the rhinos taking you with them for a ride. This finishes the game with a squirt of extra color and cooperation. Because while negotiation games are fun when you're working to chisel players out of whatever happiness they were striving for this turn, they are arguably even better when players are able to see their way through to some kind of happy collaboration. You know, I've been really pleasantly surprised by how most of my games of Zoo Vardis have had almost zero betrayals of trust. Players are shrewd, but not liars. And when someone does break that magic circle of trust in good faith negotiation, everyone else closes ranks against them. Right. You said almost and m most games mm -hmm. there. So who was the mean bean in it, your game? It, it, was, it was me. I, was I, it? I, yes. I, sh I sharked my girlfriend out of one laurel and then literally no one else gave me a vote for the entire game and only referred to me as the bad monkey. Wow. You're a monster. I was actually a marmoset. The niftiest feature is that intersection of negotiation and puzzle. Do I have enough time to extort these crocodiles before the star exhibit fills up with ibises or should I instead be paying top dollar to the armadillos to sneak round the back and sacrifice my much needed laurels? There's a gaminess outside of the negotiation that relies on a strange logical circuitry, but ultimately the game is just about talking to your friends and seeing what you can get out of them. And one of the biggest joys of Zuvardis, though, is seeing players figure out what the game is. A truly bizarre stop-start race where you don't want to cross the finish line first, you want to cross it the wealthiest. But not last. Definitely not last. And definitely not first. So maybe second, but second might be too early, so maybe third or fourth, fourth but, not if there's, but, yeah, but not if there's four players, you cut it fine, that yeah. would mean you're last. Oh, shit. But if you cross it, that's fine. How much Just, money do I have? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you can be friendly and let basically everyone through and that will get you somewhere in Zuvaris, a game ostensibly about making friends and influencing people. Or instead, you could be obstinate as f <laughs> forming, a, <laughs> forming a monstrously irritating voting block that's unprofitable but big enough to prevent anyone else from barging through. One player in a recent game that I played beelined their way to the finish and then sold their whole turns to the highest bidder for the rest of the game. Monstrous. So, that's another hit from Bytewing Games. But because we like this and mm. we like Trailblazers, does that mean we're also going to need to try Gussie, Gussie Gorillas? Gorillas? Yeah, I don't like the name of this game, Quinns. It, it, mm. it gives me bad vibes. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's good. Yeah, maybe they just haven't been on the internet before. Uh, no. Uh, okay, so, well, with that review over, there's only one question left. What's Sh that? Should the viewers get Zuvardis or the original... Quo Vardis. Obviously this. Well, we don't know that for sure, Tom, until we've entered the stats into the Shut Up and Sit Down Comparomatic. First up, let's look at price. Zoo Vardis retails for $50, whereas Quo Vardis retails for, um, I mean, like this on eBay, I guess. Then there's probably, when you do that, there's shipping costs, but like, um. Uh, next is uh, graphic ability. Zoo Vardis has a flashy, modern look. Well, Quo Vardis is more a bit, it's, it's old, it's what? It's what you'd call uh, old style. This edition looks like pus bubble wrap. That's not, you're not being helpful. Third up and finally, we're gonna look at gameplay. Zuvardis plays three to seven uh, players. It's got a new system for special powers. It's got peacocks for facilitating advanced tactics. Uh, and for Quo Vardis... Well, how are we supposed to say? We, we haven't played don't it. Don't f***ing, you're always doing this. You're always undermining the compare -o -matic. It's just shit. It's not. It is. It's not. It 
is. It's not. It is. We discussed this. You know what? I didn't want to do this, but I'm revoking your access to the Comparomatic. Okay. Ooh, ooh, I'm just getting word now. The Comparomatic has something else to compare. The machine appears to be comparing itself to Tom Brewster. This sucks. Okay, well, we'll see. It, oh, it says here, this costs the company $8.99 a month, whereas, yeah, you receive a frankly exorbitant salary. It says here, this doesn't have a bad opinion on sidereal confluence. It doesn't but, have an opinion. Uh, well, mm, it says here that it agrees with my review. Oh my God. Oh, and yeah, of course, big advantage here. It's powered by the computer. What are you powered by? Loads of things. It, ooh, that's not, I mean, you can't argue this with that. This is so unfair. Wow, that was a really one-sided showdown. It was, it was nothing. That it was, was nothing. I don't know, man. Anything. I'm convinced. It's just, I think it's the people nonsense. at home are convinced. It's complete. It's bullshit. I think that this one time, just to tr as a trial, we're going to let the Comparomatic do the oh, video outro. Why? Why? Roll.